the K to six lesson, lesson two for May twenty seventh, twenty twelve, is Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. And this is found in John chapter twenty, verses one and two and eleven and eighteen. Eleven through eighteen. Two key points. One, Jesus loves each individual believer. Beautiful scene here between Jesus and Mary Magdalene, but we realize ultimately that same relationship exists between Jesus and each one of us. Second key point, we tell our friends and family about that wondrous love. Uh, we'll talk later about how Jesus tells Mary Magdalene to go tell the disciples what has happened, and she just sprints out of there, pretty excited to tell people Jesus is back and tell them about what he has done for her. And the same is true for us. We tell other people with joy. A few of the storytelling items. Mary Magdalene headed to the tomb very early on Easter Sunday. She went with some of the other women. In John 20, we're only concerned with her. Uh, now they get to the tomb and on the way there, they're talking about how they're going to roll the stone away. Because this is a massive stone. And they're a little bit nervous about how they're going to do it. They hadn't really thought that far ahead. And they get there, and they see that it's open already. Now, the other women go to investigate, but Mary Magdalene takes off right away. Uh, she saw that the, the thing was, was rolled away. She saw the tomb was empty, so she goes. Her initial theory is that it's been robbed, that there's been a grave robbery, and Jesus' body is gone. So she goes and tells Peter and John right away. Uh, she says they've taken our Lord, and we don't know where they've put him. Now, Peter and John are understandably... Uh, Amazed, I guess, uh, a little upset, a little confused. So they sprint to the tomb, and they get there. That's a whole other lesson as they they walk into the tomb and and see what that the body is gone. Uh, Mary Magdalene follows after them. They leave the gravesite, and Mary Magdalene just stays there and weeps. Um, Mary Magdalene and Jesus had had a, an amazing relationship here on this earth. Um, she missed him dearly already. The thought that he was dead and gone was devastating to her. And you know, all of us have experienced death in one way or the other. We know how how sad, how just devastating that can be to go through something like that. But here is her friend, her teacher, someone she believes is the Savior, and now he's gone. So she's standing there weeping, and she goes and looks in the tomb again, and she sees, well... There are two angels sitting there. Now, those two angels hadn't been there when Peter and John were looking, but now they're appearing before Mary. Um, so in her grief, she doesn't really realize that, okay, there's two angels sitting here. She just sees that there are two guys. And the angels you know, ask her why she's crying, and <laughs> she just replies honestly, I, they've taken my Lord. I don't know where they've put him. And before she really has a chance to process the fact that there are two angels sitting in Jesus' tomb, she turns to you know, one way or the other and sees a man. It's Jesus, but she doesn't recognize that it's him. She thinks he's the gardener. And when she, or when he asks her, what, what's, why are you here? Why are you crying? Well, again, she says, my Lord is gone. If, you, if you've taken him, um, tell me where you put him and I'm going to get him. Sort of just kind of this feisty answer. Yeah, I will do whatever it takes to get my Lord's body, body back. If it's you, if you took it. Tell me where he is, and I'm going to go get him. Now, a few reasons. Why didn't she recognize that this was Jesus? Well, you'll see on the sheet that I'll email out. We have a few potential reasons why she wouldn't have recognized him. Reason number one, it could be her eyes were blurred from tears. You know, you cry. It makes it a little bit difficult to see what's going on. That's a possibility. Uh, number two, Mary didn't expect to see Jesus. I mean, she had just seen his dead body two days before this. So she's not expecting to see him up and about walking around. So it just kind of would blow her mind to think, oh, of course, yeah, that's Jesus. That's one reason, one possibility. Uh, Jesus may have looked different than before. Jesus had a glorified, resurrected body now. We're not going to look the same way that we look right now once we're in heaven. So that's a reason, too, that he could have, you know, it just looks different than the Jesus she had known. And finally... The fourth reason, which is sort of where I come down at this this one I believe is is the best option, but Bible doesn't tell us for sure. Jesus may have prevented her from recognizing him at first. Uh, he did the same thing with the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. You know, they they walked 
a few miles with him without seeing, oh yeah, this is Jesus of Nazareth. So in some way, Jesus had prevented them from really recognizing him. Might be the same way here. Uh, Jesus catches her attention by one word. He just says her name. He says, Mary. And she looks and realizes, it's Jesus. And she calls him Rabboni. Uh, we hear the word rabbi. That means teacher. Now, Rabboni also means teacher, but there's more to it than that. It means the teacher. As in, Jesus is my teacher, the only true teacher. He's my savior. So it's this term that conveys deep respect. Um, Mary realizes who this is, and she's overjoyed. So she goes to him, and she wants to embrace him, and maybe she does even. I don't know. She sort of falls at Jesus' feet. And he says, surprisingly to us, he says, don't hold on to me. We think, Jesus, you just rose from the dead. She thought you were gone forever. Um, you can let her give you a hug. That's not what Jesus means. Um, their relationship would change now. And it wasn't going to be the same thing where Jesus could walk and, and talk with the disciples and, and these women that loved him so dearly. He's about to go to heaven. So he can tell her, the thoughts behind this are, I'm going to hold Jesus and never let him go. I'm going to make sure that he never leaves us like this again, because this was awful just for three days. Um, Jesus says, I'm going. I'm 40 more days and I'm going to ascend, so don't hold on to me. Uh, Jesus told Mary to go. He goes says, go and tell the disciples what's happened. But he doesn't say disciples. He says, go tell my brothers. Uh, don't rush past that. That's awesome. Jesus calls us his brothers and sisters. The fact that he would refer to these men who had just deserted him when he needed him the most. I think of Peter denying him uh, right as Jesus was on trial. And it doesn't matter to Jesus. Still, by faith, by his grace, these men are his brothers. And you see, Mary doesn't hesitate. She doesn't kind of wait around to, to figure out what's going to go on. She just... She books it, goes and tells the disciples what's happened with joy. Teaching items. Um, talked about how this is such a personal interaction between Jesus and Mary Magdalene. And it is. The whole story really centers around just Jesus and one woman. That's the same thing with us. Um, Christianity is a very personal religion. That Jesus loves me. Uh, Jesus died for me, for every sin I've ever committed, that Jesus is there to hear me when I pray. Not in a selfish way, but just we have this God who's everywhere, who is in control of the whole universe, but yet has time for, for me as an individual. So that's a pretty wonderful thing. Your, your God loves you. Uh, your God cares about you, individual student, individual teacher. Our knowledge of Jesus and his love for us provides true joy. That's the truth. Um, Mary was, you see Mary so upset, but the knowledge that he's back, that Jesus is back, is enough to fill her with joy. It's the same thing for us. If you're down, if you're depressed, upset about something, go to the Word. I mean, that, that's the only thing that's really going to raise your spirits back up, is knowing what Jesus has done for you. Um, we have the privilege and responsibility of sharing the Easter joy, Easter story with people we encounter, just like Mary did. Mary took off to tell people what happened on Easter. That's our role, too. We get to tell people what Jesus did on Easter, and we do that with joy. And finally, God keeps his promises. He had made this promise 6,000 years ago, or I guess it was 4,000 years ago at, at this point in time. He said, I'm going to send my son to die for you and to rise for you. And here you see it's taking place. God fulfills his promise. God keeps every single one of his promises, too. God bless your lesson.